And then switching gears again, uh, talking a little bit just about, in general, uh, working with students, what do you find that students who are learning Russian struggle the most with whenever it comes to engaging in activities like reading and writing or related activities? And how do you overcome those challenges? Shannon, I would love to start with you on this one. Um, I think the less the the lessons that I talked about before sort of highlight some of the things that they struggle with, uh, especially as I'm thinking about my second year students, like I said, the uh, the cognates are something that they're not as good at as what I think. Um, things like uh, they really struggle a lot with um, assuming that English word order should be the same as Russian word order. And so um, I over and over again, I bring in the class headlines. Uh, I use headlines a lot, and I, I think that's um, also a good a good place to look for things because uh, to use with somewhat lower level students. Maybe maybe not first year, but there could be some for first year, but for second year, for sure, because oftentimes the news is something that they're aware of what's going on, so they they may have already some uh, knowledge of what's going on behind it. Um, but over and over, I'm trying to find uh, headlines that have, for example, the direct object in the accusative case as the first word, because inevitably students just assume that whatever the first word is, is is the subject of the sentence, and they make that mistake over and over again. And so bringing in um, the authentic materials that have that. And I think, you know, um, that's another point of where transitioning from uh, textbook language, which probably uh, on purpose in a way uses uh, the more expected word order because that's what students are more likely going to understand, you know, transitioning from that to the more authentic materials when um, those things are not the assumption, it's not going to be catering to to student, um, student vulnerabilities. Um, it's, uh, so having those, you know, kind of bringing in over and over again examples of the of the things um, that they find challenging. Another one that I already mentioned is making connections between uh, words that are related to each other. Um, you know, and I try to explain to them, you know, as a non-native speaker of Russian, but who's been working on learning Russian from a long time, for a long time, if I think about how I understand what I read, it's not that I always 100 percent know every word, but it's that oftentimes I can see a word that I've never seen before and sort of break it into parts uh, and then within the context to understand it. And so I try to, you know, in second year, there's, it's it's too early for them to completely get it, but to at least start their awareness going about the fact that, um, you know, there's they know a lot more than they think they do. There are words related to words that you know, and um, you know, hopefully help them avoid some of the things that I was doing, where I was looking up words that I should have been able to um, to understand were related to words that I already know. That's really important too, and just kind of finding ways to build the confidence too. And maybe I don't understand a hundred percent of everything, but there are tools and techniques that I can use to understand most of it. And we always know more than we think we know. So that's definitely an important thing to bring up too. Thank you. Uh, Heather, same question. What do you find students learning Russian struggle with the most, especially when it comes to engaging with reading and writing related activities? And how do you overcome those challenges? So my answer to this, um, the first thing that popped in my mind was um, the temptation to use translators. Um, and because I, that, uh, in Canvas and you know Google, it, it, on social media, um, you have this option right away. I have a lot of lessons where I have Russian text you know, embedded into a Canvas page. And when I will open that page, at the top, it will say, translate into English. <laughs> and I think, well, this is terrible, <laughs> you know? Um, and so getting students not to do that is a massive struggle, I think. It's also, I also see the benefit, you know, in letting students see the translation and compare the Russian, you know, with the English. And um, as I've, as I've taught over the years, you know, I've told students at first, don't do that. You know, don't, don't translate the page. 
make sure you keep everything in Russian and, and don't look at the English, you know, don't be tempted. The more I teach, I think, well, you know, maybe we can use this as a tool. Um, maybe we can figure out a way to use translators as a tool for helping students um, understand the Russian. So one part is, you know, just getting them to, to avoid it and just look at the Russian. Um, when I was a student, you know, when Shannon was a student, when most of us were students and I was learning Russian um, and I had to look at a text, I only had a dictionary, you know, an actual like hard back, you know, paper dictionary. And I would use it all the time to look up words. And now students have access to translators and it will give them not just the words, but the entire, you know, grammar. And that's something I didn't have when, when I was learning Russian. So when a student is writing, especially, and they have this ability to, and, and they, I don't even think a lot of them realize what they're doing when they translate, when they, when they use an online translator to produce Russian, you know, from, from the English they give, I don't think that they realize they're not just translating words, they're translating entire um, grammatical structures. So this conversation with students, how to use a translator effectively as a tool for learning Russian, I think is especially challenging. And it's something that happens, especially at the beginning, um, communicating how this, how these tools can be used as tools for learning and not you know, just a, a tool for submitting like correct Russian. I think that's incredibly challenging. Um, so that's that that was my like initial response was just dealing with with the technology that's so readily available. You know, why wouldn't students use it if they can having that conversation? Absolutely. And I'm finding, especially over the last few years, now that we have so many AI tools and new AI tools and AI tools keep getting better and better. And it's just so important, as you said, to have that conversation about, okay, we're acknowledging that this technology exists. And, and yes, likewise, I, I had my book, I had my little dictionary that I brought with me back and forth to class. And, and that's not a thing they do now. The students do not have that same dictionary, which is probably better for their backs if they're not carrying it around all day. But nonetheless, it's acknowledging things have changed. 